Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this virtual bridge session. Quite a strange day today. The sun is shining in, but uh, with a snowstorm happening outside as we speak. Uh, uh, but we've got you for the 136th virtual bridge session. I'm pleased to have with us Paula Haynes from Dumfries and Galloway College. And two things close to my heart, thinking about how we use um, technology, new technologies, new platforms, uh, or indeed ones that have been around for quite a while, but newish. Um, to good effect and also about teaching and assessment and how we can use those platforms to take those forward. I'll let you hear more about that from Paula. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'll just uh, share my screen with you. I've got a wee presentation. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what TikTok TikTok is a video sharing network platform which is free to download and use. The social media platform is used to make a variety of short videos from a range of genres like dance, comedy, education, meals, workouts, health and wellbeing and hair and beauty hacks, which is where um, my passion for it came in. Obviously watching these videos has seen that there was a, a real flair on TikTok for these videos. So the inspiration happened when I seen my kids were watching TikTok um, and they'd be showing me these videos. And I noticed very quickly that they were learning dances, routine, like routines, songs, lyrics, experiments, and how-to tricks. Um, people were also making comedy sketches as a way of communicating and expressing themselves during lockdown. So what I noticed was happening here was actually learning was taking place and people were connecting virtually. And the app was used to help lift the moods through videos and maybe have like a wee bit of tongue in cheek about how people were really feeling. Um, certain situations during lockdown, which um, it was quite funny to watch some of the videos. So who uses TikTok then? So there's a whole lot of people on TikTok, um, medical professions uh, such as doctors, dentists, dietitians, occupational therapists and nurses, and they're using it to raise awareness like um, of health conditions, promote good health, especially with COVID-19, um, keeping everybody up to date with the restrictions. A lot of the nurses and doctors were using it to show um, you know, how severe their working life was at that point. Um, celebrities, TV studios, politicians and workforces, again, showcasing what they do and educating people and a way of advertising and staying connected. So the benefits of TikTok then is you're able to create short videos using a start and stop motion. By doing this, it, it lets you record the key points of what you're trying to get across. The videos can last between 15 to 60 seconds. Once the video is saved, it automatically generates a link to help share and upload, which I think is you know, really important because as much as you can record a video, it's really difficult to get it to somewhere. So when you're trying to you know, get it uploaded to YouTube to get a link to be able to share it easily, this is already captured straight away. You, know, you get that link instantly once you've saved the video. <clears throat> the creator of the video controls if they want to make that video pri like private or public. <clears throat> so for, um, if it was just for assessment purposes and they didn't actually want it on, you know, their platform and TikTok, they could just keep that private and it's only, you know, their lecture that has the link to be able to watch it. Um, you can follow people and you can like videos, comment, duet and share videos. Um, so, yeah, this, it's, it's quite good for networking as well. OK, so with TikTok, obviously, like every social media, you know, you you will always get negativity. So you can block people, you can turn off comments to prevent that negative feed as well. So just like I was saying, the TikTok generates a link. You can use that straight onto Moodle. So you can use it as teaching materials. So we have it on our Moodle, like I've got some videos there um, of like my homemade videos of routines, but also of other people's videos that I think is really interesting and, you know, gives good feed for certain subjects for the students. And it also takes a wee break from reading books all the time or, you know, a PDFs, but they can also upload easily to an assessment and grading area on the middle. Um, again, just because it's a link, just it just did with YouTube. So, yeah, it's really good working with it on the middles as well. So the benefits for TikTok with me and the students then is the students are engaging with me and communicating. <clears throat> you know, I've got students from school kids, so age like 15 up to like um, level six students. So with the school kids, we were very aware that the schools were having problems getting them to engage online. And um, so for this, this was working really, really well with my school kids and they were communicating with me. That element of like um, forming peer teaching and support networks. So they were commenting in each other's videos and giving feedback and supporting and encouraging each other, which was really good to see. They were producing look, um, work for feedback, even things that they didn't need to do for assessment, but they're like, here, look, I've done this. What do you think? Can you give me feedback? So that was really good because they were eager to get that feedback. 
Um, <clears throat> the assessment evidence is being generated and it's authentic because obviously we were seeing the student's face in the video um, while they were doing the certain looks. Um, by doing all of this, they were building confidence and resilience as well as developing their IT skills, but they were also building like a portfolio of their work and their skills, which was really good. So using TikTok then, um, first of all, was to create like some beauty routines. So with the help of my daughters, um, they showed me how to work TikTok and um, I would, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm quite good at it now, but this is the kind of first video that I'd done. Um, and it was just under six, so as well as like using written instructions and we would always discuss it in live virtual lessons, these wee videos are just good for kind of capturing the key points and obviously using it on like a modern social platform such as like TikTok, which the students were already familiar with and engaging. And what I wanted as well, as while they were scrolling through TikTok was, you know, the college would occasionally pop up in the newsfeed with these videos. And um, so, yeah, uh, that was the, the idea of these routines. So I think Kendi's got the first video to share. Sorry, I just see um, a question there. Um, is it a business tool or is it um, something that's... We are currently looking into this just now with the college. So obviously there was concerns about, you know, how secure is it for assessment um, storing. We're not actually storing the assessments on TikTok. You know, that's a, that's a platform for creating them. And then they're stored in our middle. So um, obviously our ICT people are looking into that just now. I know the Student Association um, have one going and they're obviously connecting with the students and promoting things on it. And it seems to be working really, really well. Um, the music um, copy, these sounds are actually available on TikTok. So you can pick the sound that you want. So they actually belong to TikTok or you can create your own sound, which then belongs to you. And when you create your own sound, you can decide whether it's only you that uses that sound or if you want to share it publicly so other people can use your sound. So I hope that that helps here. Good. I'll just uh, start sharing again with the presentation. Yeah. So um, the next after me making videos, as you can see, enjoy it. And they were like, yeah, we like those. Can you do more of those? That was good. So the next part was getting them to make it, the videos. So I noticed when they were working at home, we are giving them kits and mannequin heads um, and they were doing before and after pictures on themselves and on the mannequin heads. But looking at the pictures, I could see, you know, um, things that maybe weren't quite right, but I didn't know why it wasn't quite right. So it was really hard to give the students that feedback, you know, were they using the right technique? Was it the right tools? Was it the right products? And I didn't want to dishearten them either by assuming this. So getting them to make the videos was really important for me to be able to give them good feedback. So um, they were very nervous to start with, uh, but you know, they, they did it um, and they were awesome. So student one, that I'm going to give you here. This is the first video she done. Um, I could see that she was using the wrong piece of work too big for the, the look she was trying to create. She was blocking eyebrows with pencils instead of a brush. Um, the colour of her lipstick was wrong compared to the colour of her lip liner. There was an overuse of products and obviously when she was making the video she was lacking confidence in not showcasing the products which we would expect the first time because it's completely new to them. Um, so yeah these were the things that I was able to pick up and then obviously feedback in a positive way and help her to obviously improve these um, aspects of her look. So Kenji, back to you for the first video of the student.
So that was that was the evidence that I was able to pick up and feedback to the student from watching that video. Um, I don't know if you want to stay on, Kenji. The next two videos, um, obviously she got more confident um, and we've now done the videos over two because they only last 60 seconds. Thank you. Okay, so obviously um, he's seen her next two videos that were done over two, because obviously, like I said, it's only 60 seconds long, the video. Um, so we needed the two videos for her to, be able to showcase um, all of our steps in our routine. Okay, from that video, you can see she was more confident at showcasing the products and was preparing tips and techniques and the overall um, look was approved. So, um, as I said, like IT skills are being developed here as well. So, using different effects such as green screens, filters, um, uploading backdrops and pictures, and um, the transition and planning their timing. So, that starts to stop recording. Um, obviously, needs to be smoother for the transactions. These are things that they'll obviously get better at the more they do it. Um, sense and effects, like I said, you can talk science or you can use your own sense and effects. And again, that needs to be in line with the timing of the video to make sure that that, um, again, is, is matching. And then, um, like I said before about this generated link, um, it's been obviously, again, given the student's control as to who sees this. So again, they can make it public or private and then upload it for formal grading on our Moodle. I think somebody's got a question there. Uh, Matthew's got his hands yeah. up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much, Paula. Um, I, I think you said earlier that SQA uh, would accept um, TikTok videos as evidence for assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also ask, yeah. you, you mentioned here about IT skills. Is there a, a way that the students can get credit for ICT core skills uh, via this method so. as well? I'm hoping so. I think the skills that these kids are developing nowadays using these apps is like, it's amazing. You know, what they're creating and things. Um, I know obviously the fundamentals are not there, you know, using software packages. I think it's an element of IT that could be covered using something like this, definitely. And hopefully um, that can be incorporated into it. Thanks. So continuing on with those IT skills. So they're using hashtags. So. They didn't actually read some of the students didn't realize which i was shocked at that the hashtags on their tiktoks was actually generating the audience they wanted so if they were hashtagging makeup that would hit out all to the makeup artists or people that usually do videos with makeup hashtag an fyp means for you page which is trying to generate getting onto people's for you page as an interest and again this is allows them to get more followers um, by doing all of these videos, they're creating an electronic portfolio, which hopefully, um, you know, they're going to have forever so they can showcase their skills to future employers and clients as well. I know that in my industry, this is a, this is a big way of advertising now is on social media. And that's how most people are, you know, generating a clientele. So they're, they're getting all of these skills as well by using the TikTok videos. So the next step for me with TikTok is, um, I'm sure that it can do more, um, but you know, this time of year when the new courses are starting, we're always getting asked, um, you know, do you have any promotion stuff that we can showcase what you're doing? Um, so 
this year we're obviously getting ready for world skills competition so I did a pressure test with my students and um, where we had them on teams creating a live look um, and I had different people coming in and out of the meeting and they weren't aware of who was in the meeting watching them and they were leaving feedback and comments for them and um, so people from industry you know other colleagues um you know uh, different students as well so it, it was really really good but I thought I'm going to record a bit of this so I recorded it and then uploaded it on my social media as a promotion video I then got the students to duet me that were in in the vid like in, in the lesson and what they did was to put a picture up of what they actually created in that lesson so by me putting it out my social media and using specific hashtags and them doing the same we were both reaching a wider audience and it's advertising for the student and for the college at the same time so there's two videos there the first one is the college one kenji So yeah, so that's that's where we're at now with it. Um, I'm sure it can do so much more. Um, and I'm still learning and my kids are still teaching me as well. So yeah, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Uh, thank you very much, Paula. Um, I I'll take my prerogative as host to jump in with one if you don't mind there. That's okay. um, did you have any students that weren't quite so comfortable in using the tech or doing it this way? Nope. They, they were all, they were a bit nervous about creating the videos. And the only thing I would say when I first kind of was some of the sounds maybe weren't um, appropriate. There's a lot of songs with a lot of swear words. So I had to be like, go back and say, right, right, you know, can't put anything like that on. Um, so that would be the kind of the biggest um, fear. And a lot of them actually sing while they're doing the makeup and then they'll, they'll pause and then say some lyrics and then back at it again so they're actually they're having fun when they're doing it as well and I think as well it's really hard to to build a rapport with somebody over a screen you know especially when they don't turn their camera on and they don't really speak in a live lesson so by doing this you're seeing a wee tiny part of their personality which I think is really important and good as well and I think in my interest as well you know you need to have fun or you need to have that kind of with clients and a good rapport. So I think by this, it's kind of boosting their confidence to put themselves out there. Um, so, yeah, no, I've really enjoyed doing it. It's definitely made my lockdown a lot better. <laughs> and in terms of your time in supporting the students, did you have to give an awful, a, a lot of tech support, if you like, or getting over the, the how the do older, I do this niggles? Yeah, some of the older students, yeah. Um, especially if they had like young kids and they weren't quite on TikTok, they see all the school kids and that and nothing. They're they're showing me what to do. You know, they're they're telling me what I can do with it. Um, so yeah, but some of the older ones we did do like a wee sort of how to step. You know, um, but most people nowadays are using social media. You know, um, they've got a fair idea. I think it was just this creating the videos. I know my biggest fear when I first started was when you're part creating it, you're saving it. And then I was always frightened that I uploaded it. You know, I made it public and it wasn't finished and, and who could see it and what if I made a mistake? Um, so I think that was the biggest fear at the start for me. But now that I know how to work it, it's like I know I need to obviously click, click the OK, I want to make this public. I think it's the sort of area as well where peer support is an important thing. Most of us learn about social media use from our friends. I take it that was yeah. happening as well in the background. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK. Um, They've started making videos with each other. Uh -huh. So it, like we, we, would, we were doing things like, you know, um, I don't know if you're sort of aware of Mimi Mitchell. Yeah, well, he's a famous makeup artist on Instagram and he's doing this sort of competition and I have 52 weeks of Mimi Mitchell and every Monday um, he gives it a look and everybody has to then go and put their spin on it. We then chose this as our theme for competition. So they've been creating videos and then obviously somebody else has been coming in and duetting it and then another person coming in and duetting it with obviously their look and their take on it. So that's been quite good. So yeah. Excellent. I've got a question from Walter. Walter, over to you. Yes, well, you can maybe just explain the duet bit to us um, as oldies, but um, a more important question is, given the low quality of the image from a front camera on a phone, is that good enough for you to make judgments 
accurate judgments about your assessment? I think so, yeah. I think I can see the products they're using, I can see the technique they've got, I can see the tools. Um, and then obviously they're supported again with before and after pictures. They're also supported with a client record card. So they've put it in writing, what they've done, why they've done it, and showing that understanding as well. So it's all backed up. For uh, me personally, the video is literally just an added extra bonus. Um, at this, the point of us creating the video is SQA hadn't asked for any video evidence at that point. It was literally before and after pictures. And again, like I said, this was something for me to engage the students, communicate with them and be able to see what they were doing to give them constructive feedback. Since then, however, SQA have now said for makeup, they do want video evidence, they can have video evidence, but they've now said that they want um, a consultation recorded, this recorded, that recorded. And I mean, it's unrealistic. You know, it's never going to fit in 60 seconds. Um, whereas I can pick that up in the salon, though, so I can witness that face to face. So if these video bits is what we're getting enough to generate that evidence, I think it's it's more than suffices. So I do. Yeah. Um, the recordings, you know, are they always great? Not always. You know, it depends on the phone that the student's got. It depends on the Wi-Fi. Like I live in the middle of nowhere. My, my broadband's just awful. Um, but. I think we need to be realistic. You know, we're in a pandemic, we're in lockdown. We don't have the, the money to give them these big devices and stuff. So um, I think the now it's it's working. Um, it possibly could be better, but it's all we have at the minute. Good. Well, um, th thanks for that, Paula. I, I'm really interested in that kind of multidimensional aspect of providing different forms of media and other written communication all to support the students' yeah. evidence for you. That, that's very nice. So you also asked about duetting. So duetting is like if you make a video, you can then set it to duet or stitch. It basically means the same thing, but it means then that somebody can come in and react on your video. So, ah, okay. so they can then, that's what I did with the student. I did a video, put it to duet. They then come in and then showed their finished look. So it means that somebody can react on your video and it's playing in the background. So it's like half the screen. Thank you. No problem. Thank you very much. We've got time for Kenji's last quick question. Um, so I, I, I like the fact that they're learning new skills um, and they're using this particular medium, which is really popular in, in kind of health and beauty areas at the moment. But I, I want to ask, do these specific skills translate outside of college when they move into industry? I mean, learning how to use TikTok, is that relevant to them? I think so. I think like I was saying, you know, in my industry, uh, how they advertise themselves now is on social media. And, you know, obviously by showcasing what you're doing, um, I think if you look on Instagram, you some of these big makeup artists, especially like vloggers, you know, they are making a fortune and a lot of these kids inspire to be you know, that popular. Um, we have a couple of students who have been doing this and um, on Instagram, they've actually got PR products. So companies are actually sending them their products to showcase because they've got such a big following um, crowd. And obviously it's, um, they're providing discount codes as well. So my students are like flinging it on social media, you know, TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, here's my promo code with their name. Um, and again, they get a percentage if people are using those codes when they go in. So absolutely, these skills are so important, definitely. And I'll come over to Matthew now. Yes, uh, thanks very much, uh, Jason. Paula, um, when the students see the professional vloggers and all the equipment they've got and the lighting and so on, does that make them, you think, um, be uh, ambitious for themselves for the future? Or do you think it... It could maybe put them off thinking, well, I can't really do as well as that. I don't think so. Seeing, um, you know, obviously the lighting obviously improves everything. You know, if you've got good lighting, it makes everything look better. But on TikTok, you can get filters. So if you don't have that light and you can use filters, it's going to change that anyway. But I've kind of asked them to stay away from that. That's going to distort the face a wee bit because obviously I need to see their correction work with makeup. And if they're putting a filter on that makes them look airbrushed, then I can't, you know, I can't see that. But yeah, I think um, some of them have got like ring lights um, set up at their desks and they've got these holders in them that hold the mobile phone. And then they've got like a click button which just clicks and it starts recording and stops. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to get me one of these. <laughs> they, they sound amazing. So yeah, some of them are more advanced um, 
but yeah, I think it's definitely something that as a college, I know I've put on my wish list. I would like this. <laughs> <laughs> Kenji showing off his ring light. Yeah. <laughs> That's obviously making Kenji look better. <laughs> <laughs> Only six six ninety nine from Amazon. And it came with its own tripod. It was awesome. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, any further questions before I jump in and go back to the less interesting areas of social media policy, perhaps? Well, let's go for that one then. Uh, so, Bob, Paul, <laughs> was there any discussions that you had about especially promoting the college or was that done in co collaboration with your marketing and comms people? Obviously, I've spoke to, they gave me the um, De Vries and Gallery logo and said, this is a woman we want you to use. So if you're ever using this, um, it's that. What I need to do is when I'm liking videos, um, obviously I'm liking makeup stuff and that, but I'm also liking personal videos. Like um, there's a woman on there that's called Mummy Bunter and I just think she is hilarious. Um, but, you know, if it is my work one, I don't know if I can be liking videos like that on there. So I think, you know, I need to have like probably a personal one and then a work one. So I do. So that's the kind of conversations we've had just now. But yeah, any college logos of that, I need to go through marketing to, to get that. And then um, what they're saying is the the copyright music. Um, it's easier for me to share it on my social media mm -hmm. and say I don't own the rights to this song. And then them to share my post rather than the college themselves sharing it. But um we live in such a small area in Shinoir, you know, everybody sort of knows everybody. So when I instantly share something, they know it's a college. You know, they're like, oh, that's that's Paula. Yeah. Um, Karen, if, uh, since you're, yeah, I wonder, are you, are you a TikTok user already or are you, are you piqued in your interest of using it in future? I don't use TikTok, but I do get involved in a lot of videos of my daughters. <laughs> <laughs> to jump in at the right time or lie down and pretend to be sitting up, <laughs> walk into a room, uh, all these silly things I've been involved in doing. Um, but one of the questions is going to ask, what's the best way to store that if it can be used as evidence for SQA? So how do you collate all your students, the, the relevant TikTok videos? What's the best so way to do So do we get the students to upload it on our Moodle? like mm -hmm. in a grading area so um, once it's ready for assessment we wouldn't you know keep it on their platform but they, they can keep it on their platform but we need it on obviously a secure site which would be our middle yeah. and it, it's right. just like youtube like they literally pop in the url and that's it right right okay thank you thanks no problem. well thank you very much for that that brings us to the end of the recorded session and never have i been so aware of the need for a, a makeup department and wardrobe department for myself when I'm appearing on screen, but uh, can perhaps deal with that later. A uh, huge thank you to Paula for taking us through then what she's been doing there and it's a fantastic project. Bye for now. Thank you.